Hey, what's going on boys and girls? Support DJ Mad and Mad, DJ Mad.com. And in this video, we are going to be talking about Steinberg Cubase Pro 9. Five things I hate about them. All right. Now, before I get started on this video, I want to make something clear. I am not hating on Cubase Pro 9 or on Steinberg at all. I am just voicing my opinion on five things that they could have done better. Now, on the next video that I'm going to be posting, I will be talking about five things that I love about Cubase Pro 9. All right, so don't start posting on the, uh, on the comments that, that I'm just hating or that I'm just ranting or whatever the case may be. I am just doing, you know, my five things that I hate or dislike, that's a better word. And then on the next video, I am going to be doing five things that I love. Okay, stay tuned and check this out. All right, so the first thing that we're going to be talking about is the mixer, um, the, this duckable mixer. I call it uh, a mess. That's what I call it, clutter, a mess. I do understand that a lot of guys use laptops, so yes, this is definitely something uh, very good for, for, for guys who are using laptops. The reason why I'm opening it so fast and, and closing it back up is because I made a shortcut to open the, the console. Um, so <clears throat> this is what I have a problem with this, okay? If you want to go and open up the full window, you have to click this little button right here on the top, I mean on the middle right, hand corner and when you click on that the full mixer opens up but your mouse is right here so let's say when you're mixing and whatever and when you want to close the window you will expect that there'll be a button somewhere around here where you can close the window no there's not a button over here all you gotta the only way i found that you can do it is going to the x and closing it now to me i think that's too much clicking too much going on i think they definitely dropped the ball on that they should definitely fix that. If you have a button right here, the first logical place that I will look for that button to close is in the same spot will be over here. And you do have the space to do it. Now, I don't know if they have a uh, close uh, mixer, which they don't. I don't see it. I don't see it here. So all I'm saying is if you're going to have a button on the right-hand side where people are automatically going to go, oh, let me enlarge the mixer, you will expect, you know, your brain automatically is telling you that the button should be right here. No, they just didn't add any button for you to close it. They just want you to simply go to the top left corner and close it like a regular program. Let's go to number two. All right, so number two, mix console history. So we're going to enlarge the mixer. In other words, just opening up a console like, you know, you over here or Windows. Where is it? Uh devices and you open up a console they just added a fancy little button there and <clears throat> you have visibility on the top on the top left corner you got zones and now you got history now notice that i have a full project that i've been working on for a couple of days and i have no history the reason why is because history only works is only usable while you are creating ch changes in the session while you're using the program in other words it doesn't save with your program, with your files. Now, I am not a coder. I do not know how to create or write programs. I'm, you know, I'm more than sure that they probably have a good reason why they didn't do this, but I am more than sure that there is a possible way for you to actually save your history along with your project. You know what I mean? So this thing right here, you know, it's a great, you know, you guys did a great job with it, but you guys dropped the ball on the fact that it disappears when you close your project and you load it back up basically if you have history on this thing and and you close the program or it crashes or whatever and it loads right back up you lose all the history and then you lost everything you know the only other way you could do it is by saving saving versions so that is number two let's go to number three so this is my number three this to me makes no sense and what is it markers 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 and more markers you could just add markers another track of markers another track of markers another track of marker and you could just put them wherever the crap you want to put markers at which makes no freaking sense to me my question is who the hell asked for this feature no one asked for this feature like why do you need more than one marker track 
it makes no sense in the planet. This is truly something that they just added because they didn't have anything else to talk about. So Cubase, Steinberg, please stop it. This is just a waste of coding. And as a matter of fact, you guys didn't even code anything. All you guys did went to the value of how many market tracks you guys, guys could create on a project. And you just put plus nine, nine more. And that's it. And now you, you know, you've given it to us like if it's like an innovative something that you could export. Yeah, I understand that you could, you, you could do markers and export, you know, by certain markers. But you don't need that. This is what you have. This right here, your cycle. You know, if you wanna, if I wanna bounce from, you know, from bar sixty-five to one thirteen, I just do that right there. It makes no freaking sense. Markers and more markers makes no sense. All right. So the next thing that I feel the Steinberg definitely dropped the ball on is very audio. Where is the polyphonic button? Where are you? Nowhere near. Let me load up a stereo track. No polyphonic, no nothing. Like, like it's just a mono, 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 mono. Why? Why? We all, many people, many people ask for this feature, and you guys still not giving it to us. I know there's a lot of copyright laws with Melodyne and Ableton Live and so on and so on, but I'm pretty sure that just like you guys created VSTs, you guys could create your own polyphonic very audio, Melodyne, whatever you want to call it, all the same thing. Just please give us something that we really, really want. Do that for us. All right, guys, last and not least, we're going back to the mix console, and I have a little issue with this functionality. Uh, the issue is that when you open the mix console, you are only able to see one thing at a time, and that is right here, you only see the mixer, I mean the faders, uh, this one you only see the the inserts, and this one you only see the sends. And my opinion on how this functionality should have been, you have all this real estate right here. I think that when you open the mixer originally, everything should have shown up. You know, you could scroll up and down, and you'd be able to see your inserts and your and your sends. Now these three buttons that you got right here, they should still be there. But they should be off and on buttons, meaning if you only want to see your faders, you turn off the inserts and the sends. If you only want to see your sends, you turn off the, the inserts and your fader and so on and so on. That's my opinion on the way this should have been. Why do I feel that that would have been a, a better work, workaround than where we at right now? It's because we as, a, as producers, as engineers, we are looking for the fastest shortcut. You know, when, when we have a doll, we want the fastest shortcut, not the longest shortcut. We don't want to have to click a thousand things to get to where we want to go. It should be just bam, right there. So that's my opinion. Everything's showing, and then you're able to turn them off as you need them. 